Good evening and welcome. I'm Sheila Balgobin and I am the Dream Decipherer. And I help you to crack the code of your sleeping dreams so you can sleep sound and dream deep. This evening, um, this is part two of my sleep deprivation and children series. And I'm looking at it from the other other side, not the sleeplessness on the part of the child, but sleeplessness on the part of the parents caused by the children's sleeplessness. Now, <laughs> you're not going to like, <laughs> like this, but you probably already know it's true. Uh, new parents can expect to lose sleep over the six years, up to six years after the birth of their child. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> new parents are so easy to spot, aren't they? They have the bloodshot eyes and dazed expressions, uh, <laughs> to say the least. Um, and may actually fall asleep during conversations. Now, while giving birth to a child, of course, is a wonderful event, many parents are not prepared and are actually taken aback by how exhausted they are during the first weeks and months of the baby's life. Newborns, of, as we know, require constant attention. So they're needing to, to feed every hour or two and have their their nappies or diapers change just as often. It goes in, it goes out. <laughs> According to the National Sleep Foundation, the average adult needs roughly seven to nine hours of sleep every night for optimum functioning. But when you're only getting a couple of hours of sleep a night on an ongoing basis, you will develop what is called a sleep debt that can be hard or even impossible to pay back. I say you really can't pay back a sleep debt because even one night without sleep can cause some minor damage to, to, the, to the functioning of the body. So, and you can't undo that. Once it's done, it's done. But so if your sleep debt, debt persists over time, your health will suffer. For most parents, sleep deprivation improves once their child begins sleeping through the night, roughly six to eight hours. And for about 90% of babies, this begins around the age of three months, according to the Nemours Foundation. But it's when a newborn comes home that parents realize that sleep really goes out the window. And new research seems to indicate that sleep loss can actually plague parents for up to six years after the birth. Why? <laughs> I, I, child is newborn, a toddler, a teenager, or has five kids of their own, <laughs> you will find that you will still lose sleep over your children. That never stops. It lessens over time, but it never goes away. But an uh, professor, associate professor of psychology at the University of Warwick here in England said that older children may still they become ill, they may have nightmares or wake up and decide they want to get in bed with their parents, and that will cause still sleep disturbances. So, and even if children aren't waking up their parents directly, it's possible that, that parents are worrying about things connected to their children, which is also making them lose sleep. Now, <laughs> another stu recent study was conducted in Germany with more than 4,600 men and women, which involved interviews to gauge sleep duration and satisfaction and was conducted annually. Oh, at the end of the, this study, what was found was that both sleep duration and satisfaction sharply declined following childbirth um, in the first three months, particularly among mothers, which you would expect. First time parents were particularly vulnerable to experiencing sleep disruption in, early on, as were mothers who breastfed. And you can understand that. I mean, with breastfeeding mothers, they're, they're constantly up and down, up and down, up and down, even if the, the bassinet or, is, or crib is right next to the bed, right next to their bed. 
they're up constantly. Um, with new parents, it's even worse because every little sound and, and thing, they're learning about their babies. So every little sound, every little you know, sigh that the child makes, they're up in a panic wondering what's wrong. Now, um, on average, it was found new moms lost an hour of sleep a night in the first three months. That's, you know, during the course of the night up to an hour of sleep. Sleep patterns did uh, improve significantly over time. However, to some degree, sleep duration, uh, sleep disruption rather, continued even up to six years later. And that was regardless of parental income or whether her mother or father was raising a child alone or with a partner. So, okay, we know that obviously that newborns and, and young children are going to create sleep disruption in parents, but what exactly happens? How does that, there's the parents sleep get disrupted? Now, newborns tend to slip, sleep in fits and starts for some 16 to 20 hours out of 24. So it's, it's really impossible for a parent to get more than a couple of hours of sleep at a time. And according to a physician and sleep specialist, Dr. William C. Dermott, uh, parents of newborns often lose about two hours of sleep per night until the baby's about five months old when their sleep patterns become a bit more regular. From then on until their child becomes two, parents usually lose about an hour of sleep each night. As you would imagine, nursing mothers often bear the brunt of sleep loss. Many uh, newborns breastfeed as often as every hour or two, leaving their mothers struggling to stay awake during the day. And although nursing might mean weeks or even months of interrupted sleep, the payoff in terms of the bonding between the mother and child can make it worthwhile. So there's a trade-off there. Now, breastfeeding parents really just have to find ways to be able to cope with frequent sleep to, uh, interruptions. Think about it. You have to get up to get, to get the bottle, to warm the bottle, this, that, the other. So it, it, in the beginning, until you, you kind of find your rhythm, it's even worse at, the, at first. However, the benefit of bottle feeding is that someone other than mother can feed the child so that the, uh, and sh thus share the burden of sleep loss. But even if your baby is primarily breastfed, you might decide to use uh, uh, at night bottles to, with, filled with formula or even expressed milk uh, at night in order to be able to, to give mom a chance to get a bit of rest. Now, I remember this from some uh, friends, good friends of mine when I was living in L.A., uh, the, my girlfriend um, had had a new baby, second child, and we would find little baggies, you know, tied with, with twist ties of breast milk <laughs> in the freezer that we could warm up um, and give to the baby when she wasn't around or when she was trying to sleep. So it, it really can make a difference, and you can still use breast milk without mom actually being there. Now, there's another issue is that, uh, that parents, new, particularly new parents face, is to find a calm place among, amidst all the chaos. Um, and think about this. What does a mother do when the house is a mess, the baby's screaming, she's exhausted, and may even be suffering with postpartum depression? And it's a fact. Life will be a bit chaotic for the first few months. Um, and trying to live up to the unrealistic view of the perfect parent, the perfect family, is just nonsense. Um, letting go of some of these impossible dreams and ideals about what your life is supposed to be like and asking for help, whether it be from your doctor, whether it be from family members who, or, or close friends, ask for help so that you can get the support you need to be able to relax, get some rest, and actually focus on bonding with your baby. Now, one question that gets asked quite a bit 
by parents is that uh, can is there any way to train my newborn to be able to sleep on a schedule? Don't even try it. <laughs> um, their, their newborn's biological clocks are immature and they need time to develop. They find their own pattern, their own rhythm. So trying to force them to find a pattern that suits you is not going to be helpful neither to you nor to the parent. However, there are some things, some sleep cues that parents can use um, that will work for older infants, such as letting light into the baby's room in the morning or dimming them in the evening and maintaining regular feeding and activity schedules will help to coordinate the baby's biological clock into a 24 hour day as the child grows older. So trying to get your newborns to adhere to what you would like, forget about it. It ain't going to happen. But once they're, they're several months older and are sleeping more regularly, there are things that you can do to help. Now, <laughs> you have to, one thing that I have learned from um, observing parents and taking care of children over the years is that smart parents, particularly moms, learn to rest when the baby rests. So it is estimated that a parent loses about 350 hours of sleep at night during the baby's first year of life. So napping is a great way to reduce your sleep debt. Uh, and it's specific, particularly if you've gone a while without getting good quality rest and the sleep that you're getting, um, even in a nap, will be helpful and actually be more effective. You'll be able to fall asleep quickly, sleep more soundly, and actually get more sleep and refreshment from the shorter amount of time spent in bed. And there have been studies around this where taking a, what they call, used to call power naps, it's boiling hot, folks. <laughs> I have to start fanning myself. It's really hot. Um, you... Even a short nap, um, particularly when you're sleep deprived, is going to be is going to be helpful. But a longer nap, the better. A team of researchers actually found that a 45 minute nap improved alertness for six hours after the nap. Other researchers found that a prophylactic or preventative nap of one to two hours actually helped people function better. So even 20 minutes can make a big difference for many people. I know for me, I have practiced Transcendental Meditation or TM for more than 30 years now. And what I have found is that that two short bursts of 20 minutes twice, 20 minutes twice a day was the equivalent of six hours of sleep. So not only was I getting deep rest, but I was also slowing down the, the, the rate of stress and therefore aging of my system. So that's another alternative, finding alternate means to be able to get that deep rest that's needed. So how can you do that? Um, as tempting as the idea may be, do not try to catch up on your chores while the baby is sleeping. Instead, turn off the phone, lie down in a quiet, darkened room. Create, you know, create a relaxing environment for yourself by using a mattress with plenty of support and making sure that the room is in a comfortable temperature and not boiling hot like it is today. <laughs> Other things that you can do are, is to ask your partner or family member or friend to watch the baby for you while you nap. Your helper may be able to pitch in with a, um, a bit of few household chores, such as cleaning, cooking, laundry, or maybe babysitting older children. Um, avoid at all costs caffeine, alcohol, and nicotine. Um, they are all stim nicotine and caffeine are stimulants. And while alcohol may help you fall asleep, it actually will increase 
the amount of wakefulness you experience at night. If you're nursing, feed, learn to feed the baby while lying on your side. Um, this can be a much more restful position. And um, it, especially at night, it'll give you a chance to get a little bit more rest. You might want to consider putting the baby's crib or bassinet next to, next to the bed so that you don't have to travel down the, the hallway to the room and then back again. And it also will cut out the need for um, baby monitors, which are not good for your brain or the baby's brain, which is still developing. Um, if, on the other hand, you're using formula, make the bottles up ahead of time and just warm just need to warm them up. Um, you can, or have, if you're using formula, you can have the formula, powdered formula next to you um, to make it up right then and there. But pre-filling several bottles and can save you time in any case. You can also save energy by cutting down on the number of trips to the kitchen, half, a, half asleep, stumbling and banging your toe in the chair, because you're half asleep. You know, find way, little tricks, little ways of being able to save yourself some time and energy and still get the job done. Um, working parents may want to consider taking cat naps at lunchtime. Remember those, those 20 minute power naps I, we were, I mentioned earlier? Um, it found, some people found that just taking a, a quick little nap um, and then having lunch afterwards, having a, you know, a, a light snack after, was a good way to catch up on some sleep. Um, it may be difficult to say no to people, especially they're all excited about seeing the baby, but you might want to actually um, limit the numbers of people you have during the first, um, have visiting rather, during the first weeks or months that the, after the birth. It's having to entertain a steady flow of guests can take time away from your naps and from bonding with the baby. I mean, with this partial lockdown, not lockdown that's going on, um, maybe this is less of an issue because people are, are trying to be um, maintain social distancing, or at least some people are. But in any case, uh, the, there will be a visitors, increasing number of visitors coming along, and you have to get to the point where you're strong enough to put your foot down and say, no, <laughs> don't come. Um, I need my rest. If you have a spouse or partner, remember that the two of you are in this. Try sleeping in shifts. Uh, have some, you have the partner take over some of the nighttime feedings, whether it be, you know, expressed or bottled milk that that's um, on tap. If you're nursing exclusively, um, have your partner bring the baby to you for breastfeedings or changing the diaper and maybe even actually holding the baby and, you know, till they fall asleep afterwards. If you can afford it, um, hire someone to do the cleaning for you for a month or two or more if necessary. That will allow you time to um, um, not only to take time off from strenuous chores, which if you're recovering from childbirth, for example, having had a cesarean section and you've got stitches to worry about and healing, healing membranes, having someone take over those chores can really be a boost and help you to, to recover more quickly. And you can spend that time with your child. What is the price of sleep deprivation for, for parents. Uh, when sleep deprivation isn't addressed, the consequences can really sometimes be absolutely devastating. The National Commission on Sleep Disorders Research found that infant abuse may be more likely for sleep deprived parents who may feel they're just at their wit's ends and they shake or hit a crying infant without even really thinking about it. It's just a reaction. Um, Co-sleeping parents um, may be, who are exhausted may be less aware of the baby sleeping next to them and can actually roll over on them and, and smother them. Uh, sleep deprivation tragedies can occur outside the home as well. 
The National Sleep Foundation states that more than 1,500 people die every year due to fatigue-related um, vehicle crashes. So you're not getting enough sleep. You know, you're on your way to the supermarket or wherever it is. You you have a micro sleep where you doze off for just a few seconds. But a few seconds in a in a in a vehicle that's moving is enough to to cause a fatal accident. There's a yet another reason why it's necessary to get as much rest as you can. Sleep deprivation can be a contributing factor in postpartum depression. So if your fatigue is overwhelming and, you, and you're experiencing what's called the baby blues for longer than two weeks after delivery, see your doctor immediately or speak to a, a practice nurse immediately. Because if you don't, it can spiral out of control and that depression can last years and again can lead to cascade to all kinds of problems, including problems in the child because you can't relate to the child or act actively want to get rid of it. Um, it's a serious thing. So if you if you still can't get it together and feeling exhausted um, and depressed, see your doctor. Make an appointment, call, have them call you immediately. So there you have it. That's the end of my series on uh, childhood insomnia and its impact on both child and parent. I hope you found that useful. And if you're having problems with sleep, whether due to, to child-related issues or other issues, give me a call. It's free. If there's no obligation. And I may be able to give you some simple drug-free tips that you can use to help you sleep better. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Have a wonderful evening. Stay cool, <laughs> which is difficult in this heat, but try. And I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.